Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, lived a king and his queen. They ruled their people with kindness and were loved by all. But there was something missing. For the king and queen desperately wanted a child, but had none. Then one day, while the queen was having a swim in the river, a frog popped out of the water and told her, You will soon have a baby. And so it was. The queen soon had a baby girl, as beautiful a child as had ever been seen. They named her Briar Rose. To celebrate the birth of the new princess, the king and queen ordered a great feast in her honour. The entire court was to attend, and in addition, the king invited all of the fairies in the land. In all, there were 13 fairies, but one of them had not been seen in years, and so she was forgotten. The king ordered 12 gold place settings, one for each fairy. The feast was unlike anyone in the land had ever seen, only the finest of everything. Each fairy arrived, and each gave Briar Rose a magical gift. Inner beauty, grace, intelligence, patience, the singing voice of an angel, and so on. But before the last fairy could bestow her gift upon the baby, the doors flew open in a great wind. The last fairy ran behind a curtain and hid there as the thirteenth fairy entered. She trembled with rage at having not been invited to the feast. The king tried to make his apologies, but it was no use. The fairy had made up her mind. She approached the child's crib, pointed at her and said... In her fifteenth year of life, the princess shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Everyone gasped in horror. The fairy stormed out of the hall, leaving everyone shaking. But the last fairy had not yet given her gift. She came out from the curtain and said to all, Do not fear, for I still have my gift to give. And while I cannot undo what has been done, I can help. It shall not be death that falls upon the princess, but a deep sleep until she is awakened by the kiss of a noble prince who shall be her true love. The king did all he could to avoid the thirteenth fairy's prophecy. He ordered every spinning wheel and spindle in the land destroyed, and anyone who disobeyed would be punished. And Briar Rose grew into a beautiful young woman, and all who knew her loved her. But just before her 15th birthday, the king and queen were called away from the palace, leaving Briar Rose to explore the castle. And while she did, the princess came upon an old tower. Ever since she could remember, the door was shut and locked. But on this day, the day of her 15th birthday, the door was open and a golden light shined down on the winding staircase. Briar Rose, curious as ever, climbed to the very top and found a small door with a rusty key inside its lock. She turned the key and the door creaked open. Inside the room sat an old woman spinning silk on a wheel. It was mesmerising to the princess, for it was unlike anything she'd ever seen. Good day, madam, she said. What is it that you're doing? The old woman smiled. Spinning, dear girl, I am spinning. May I try? asked the princess. You may, but you must come closer. Briar Rose walked to the old woman 
and ran her hand along the wheel. But no sooner had she done that than the spindle pricked her finger and the girl fell to the floor. The woman let out a hideous cackle and left. One of the guards heard the sounds from the tower and went to see what the fuss was about. There he found the princess on the floor. He picked her up and lay her on the bed, sleeping peacefully. When the king and queen were told of what had happened, they rushed home to the palace, but there was nothing that could be done. The spell had been cast. The king summoned the fairy, who had tried to soften the spell at the great feast. And when she arrived, he asked, I beg you, we too would like to sleep until our briar rose awakes. For when she wakes, it will be a different world. We must be with her. Will you do it? The fairy replied, I shall do this and more. And with a wave of her hand, the fairy put the entire castle into a deep sleep. Even the dogs and mice lay down in peaceful rest. Around the castle grew a thick hedge of thorns, so that all would be protected for their hundred years of sleep. Throughout the land, the tale of the sleeping beauty spread, and every few years a prince of a distant land would ride out and try to break through the thorns. But none ever succeeded. After just about a hundred years, a handsome young prince on a shiny white horse galloped toward the briar hedge, and just as he approached, an old man appeared on the road. The prince stopped his horse and dismounted. Can you tell me, sir, is this the briar hedge that protects the sleeping princess? It is the same. But as my father told me, and his father before him, no man has broken through the thorns. But it is my destiny, and with that, the prince led his horse toward the hedge. He pushed a large branch, but it would not budge. He tried another. Nothing. But on the third, the branch moved, and suddenly the briar pulled aside, and the prince, with his horse following, walked inside. He saw the guards asleep and walked past. Everything was silent. The prince walked into the palace. He saw the king and queen asleep in their thrones and continued on until he found the door to the tower. At the top, he turned the rusty key and the door creaked open. And there, in a beautiful silk bed, lay Briar Rose. The prince thought she was the most beautiful creature he'd ever seen. And he leaned down and kissed her. And just as soon as he did, Briar Rose opened her eyes and smiled up at him full of love. The prince took her hand and together they went down into the great hall where life picked up where it had left off a hundred years before. Birds flying, dogs jumping, food cooking. The king and queen awoke and hugged their daughter and the prince who had saved them all from their eternal rest. And they knew this was her true love. Briar Rose and her prince were married the next day and all the kingdom rejoiced. And they lived happily ever after. The end. And now it's time to take a deep breath and close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>